Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics and Living, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about church unity and how realistic is it to expect that denominationalism will end and all the Christian churches will reunite as it was once, as one church under Peter. Now before I begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomine Patris, et Filii Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri, Filio, de Spiritui Sancto, Sucutra in Principio, et Nuc, et Semper, et de Seculi Seculorum. Amen. New Testament is pretty clear, both when you look at Jesus' words and uh, the words of, of, of really all Paul, the Johannine letters, the Petrine letters, that there needs to be unity in the church. If you look what Christ said, Christ didn't tell Peter, uh, t- tell Peter in Matthew 16, Upon you I'll build my churches. <laughs> There what, 24,000 denominations? He said, you, I'll, I'll, I'll build my church. You see him played out, he says in John 17, it says, his church that they might be and remain as one as he and the Father are one. He talks about in the scriptures as well how kingdoms that are divided fall and that you got to re- remain united. He talks about in, in the story of the last shepherd, how there's, or the lost, of the shepherd and the lost sheep, that Jesus is the shepherd and now there's only one shepherd. You look at played out in a lot of the Pauline epistles. What is he? What does he warn about? Division, dissension, separation. You look at First Corinthians in the early chapters. He talks about some people say you follow Paulo, some people say you follow Cephas. No, we follow one Jesus Christ, one church. It's always the idea of unity, unity, unity. You see in the Petrine letters, the Johannine letters, they talk about too the same thing. Watch out for false prophets. I'm going to separate the church. It's all about unity oneness and in fact that's one of the four marks of the church one holy catholic but apostolic one right the intention of jesus christ was that there'd be one church he created a visible church we were supposed to be one church and we had one church really into the great schism yeah i mean there were heresies you had the donatists the gnostics the arians you know we've, we've had the manichaeanists we have we've had tons of them in the early church but they all went away so we were one unified church into the Great Schism, and then later in the 16th century, then it went, psh, and then psh, 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 like a truly like a like a branch, branch after branch after branch after branch. So this is not what Christ intended. Now, in, in God's permissive will, He allowed denominationalism to happen, but this was not the intent, and this was it's not the outmost expression of, of Christianity. Christianity has brought so much good to this world. We've talked about in previous episodes that I think even secularists don't realize that a lot of the, the benefices and the patrimony uh, that they have are from Christianity, but that's not here nor there. How realistic is it that we are going to reunite and be like we were before 1054? And really, I mean, let's say prior to 1517, aside from the Eastern schismatic churches, which still have apostolic succession, all these things, how realistic is it? Are we going to get back to Christendom? Well, I mean, we've had the, 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 the movement of ecumenism. So, right, ecumenism has been around and especially it was really ratcheted after, after Vatican II. And look, I, I think I've talked about it here before. There's like, in my person, in, in my view, there's two types of ecumenism. There's true ecumenism, ecumenism, it's true. Well, you know, there's ecumenism and ecumenism's overt attempt or goal, I should say, is to bring the churches back together. But look, there's false ecumenism and there's true ecumenism. True ecumenism is the Catholic Church is the church founded by Jesus Christ. You need to come to us. You need to come to us. And this is the ecumenism that you see played out by the church fathers and the greatest medieval theologians all the way through into the 20th century, is we have the signs of the true legitimate church founded by Jesus Christ. Come to us. And I think you've seen more false ecumenism kind of played out in this kind of universalism and indifferentism. I know there's a lot of isms here, but it's kind of like, well, you know, all the churches, they're all equally good. And well, you don't have to go to church. You know, if you're a good person, works will get you into heaven, which Catholics don't believe. Yeah, everybody gets to heaven, you know. And, and so you saw these kind of played out with these, like the Assisi Conference, God bless St. John Paul II. But I think in retrospect, he probably regrets doing some of those conferences where you know he's kissing the Quran and he brings all these religions together and 
you saw Francis with the Pachamama thing and, and, and this kind of false ecumenism where we change the mass to make it more friendly to Protestants. This is what Annabelle Bonini even admitted, the, arch, the, the architect of the Novus Ordo Mass, to make it more approachable and the attempts of bringing more Protestants in. And it, it didn't work, right? We, we, we have episodes here how, in fact, most converts go to the TLM and the Ordinariate. And so his endeavor, his at least ostensible argument for rolling out the NO was it would bring more Protestants hasn't worked. But that's false ecumenism, this indifferentism that you know, everybody, all these, all these churches are equal, you know, they're all just as good. No. How realistic is it that we're going to have some of these churches come back to Holy Mother Church, come back to Rome? Well, we've seen it played out in history, in particular with the Eastern Rites. Some of the Eastern Rites, especially during the, the councils of the 400, 500s, like the Monophysite, controversies, some of them left Rome, but eventually came back. You've had some, some rites of the Eastern Church that never left. You know, a lot of people forget, like a lot of, of Catholics forget that we have these different rites, and like, I want a better liturgy. Well, you know, you can go to the Maronite, you can go to the Byzantine Catholic rite, you can go to all these different rites, there's nothing that stops you from going to it. And certainly, we have an episode here like trad cats who are fed up with all the politics going on in the latin right they want to go to orthodoxy and they, they forget it's like what well, you can still not be a schismatic still be in the bosom of christ uh, with the vicar of christ with peter just go to one of the eastern rites but some of the eastern rites did leave and, and, and they came back and then you had some that never left like the maronites i don't think the maronites ever left how realistic is it that we're all going to go back to, I mean, I'm not even going to say pre-1053, let's say 1054, even, even 1516. I think there's a better chance we'll go back to 1053 than to 1516. What do I mean by that? You've seen that there have been Protestant groups that have come back to Holy Mother Church. And you saw this really played out, I think, under Benedict with the ordinary of the chair of St. Peter. So if you're not familiar with that, that's the, the, the kind of national diocese that I go to. But it, it, it was created, and I think it originally was created by John Paul II, but it was really kind of fostered more by, by his successor of Anglican churches, parishes, that wholesale came back to Holy Mother Church. Now, Anglicanism, and we have a couple of episodes here, I mean, there's a lot of fracturing Anglicanism, of course. I mean, they've open homosexual and open female and lesbian bishops. But you have the high church, which are more, their liturgy is more like ours. You have low church, you have Methodism and all these different branches. But the, the church, Holy Mother Church, Catholic Church, has allowed provisions to allow Methodist ministers, to allow Anglican Episcopalian uh, priests to come in to, to Rome. They can come back to Rome, I should say. And they can bring their entire parishes with it. And that's what you've, you've seen in the ordinary of the chair of St. Peter. So you do see this movement in high church Anglicanism and pockets of some of the mainline denominations where they are coming back to Holy Mother Church. That's happening. I think in the Eastern, you do see, I think there's a decent chance some of the Eastern Orthodox, because again, there, there's, there's no uh, monolithic Orthodox theology, there's no orthodox leader of the orthodoxy because they're all autocephalic churches. So there's Russian Orthodox, Greek, and Bulgarian, all these different ones. And they don't even get along with each other and the theology is radically different. But so you'll see maybe some of these come back, some of these smaller churches. I think within a hundred years, there's a chance that maybe some of these autocephalic Orthodox might come back to Rome. There's a chance, okay? I think there's much greater chance of some of the mainline Protestant denominations like the Episcopalians and Anglicans who don't like what's going on in their own churches that will come back to the, 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 the truth. Because, I mean, that's the one thing about, about the Catholic Church that the, the Protestants and the atheists can say is that we've had constancy. We've always taught to protect the life from conception to natural death since the very early church. We've, we've always been a stalwart, along with the Mormons, but not, you know, the Mormons will have some, some cases of exception, like for abortion. But we've always been very consistent on a lot of the social teachings that are destroying the culture right now. So I think you're going to see some of the mainline Protestant denominations, more, more of the ones that have liturgy, come to, to the bosom of Holy Mother Church just because that, that they, these teachings uh, are a beacon to people who 
believe in the truth and want to be in, in a faith that is consistent, regardless of the theological differences they might have. And I think you're going to see maybe some of the Eastern churches, the smaller Eastern churches, come back within 100 years. Do I envision a world or a time where the Assemblies of God, the Church of Christ, the Southern Baptists, you know, fill in the blank, the Mormons, the, the Jehovah's, you know, there's thousands of denominations, the 10th Baptist Street on Main Street, the 10th Baptist Church on Main Street, they're going to come to Rome. Yeah, I think I've that one. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to put on the rose-colored spectacles here, but I think the chances of that are exceedingly slow, aside from you know, supernatural intervention. Of course, that could, that could happen, but I don't see that happening. So are we going to go back to a time where the church was one holy Catholic and apostolic 1054 before 1054? Probably not. That's, I, I just don't foresee that happening, aside from a supernatural intervention. But I do see trends of the centripetal effect of Holy Mother Church bringing in certain pockets coming in. And there's also a chance within the next hundred years that we're going to have schismatic centrifugal, centrifugal forces within the church that are going to create schismatic groups. Yes, I mean, you know, for sure there's, there's very small schismatic Catholic groups, like you have the old Catholics who are not even old, they, they broke off in 1871. Uh, you have other ones, we talked about that, that news anchor that worked for ABC that was part of that spinoff liberal schismatic group. You've always had these very small ones, but I'm not talking about those. Is there a chance that like the German bishops, we're gonna have a German national church, kind of like what Henry VIII did back in the 1530s. Is there a chance in the next 100 years that you're gonna have large, mainstream groups, Catholic groups, schismatize uh, off, of, off of Rome. Yeah, I mean, certainly with the culture wars, yeah, I could totally see this happening too. So I, I, I can foresee that. But will there be a time, aside from a supernatural invention, intervention, that we're going to have one church as Christ created and intended? Probably not. But I'd like to hear from you in the comments. What, what do you think in the 100 years, the next 100 years, what, who's coming in and who's leaving? I'd really like to hear from you. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.